greetings back. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the Lord um, prompted me when I was sitting there to thank you people in the sound booth and the camera people. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the Ministry of Helps in this ministry. You know, uh, without you, we'd still do it. Because <laughs> that's just who we are. But it couldn't be anywhere near what it is today. So I just want to thank you from South Dakota. My wife, Deb, I want to say hi to you. She's working today. And so she wasn't able to monitor the conference line, but I am. And so... I wanted to say hi to her because she came on the chat anyway. <laughs> she came on the chat anyway, and she put the conference line number up there just like she does every week. So, <laughs> hallelujah. Meanwhile, she's dealing with crazy people. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are locked up. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's locked in with them. So. But you know the grace of God, I guess I'll expound a little bit on this. My wife works in a, uh, in a maximum security place for people with mentally, uh, that are mentally disabled. And basically they're grown up people with teenage minds. And uh, she's the only one out of all the workers that they won't hit, throw chairs at. And uh, in fact the other workers go and get behind her <laughs> when things start because they know <laughs> they're not going to hurt her. And, she said, I've had one threaten me, but I just looked at him and I said, if you do this, I will never trust you again. And he just dropped back. But she says it's because they see the nine-foot angel standing beside her, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's a little bit about what she does. My message today is settle it. And I want to I be as... Uh, forthcoming as I can. When I say settle it, I mean settle it. Solid. Do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God? I mean, do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God? I, I mean, do you really believe that the Bible is the Word of God? All right, I got three of them. That's pretty good because you'll always get that first one. You talk to people that don't even read the Bible, they'll say that. But they don't act on it. They don't do anything about it. We have to settle that that Bible is a basis of our faith and is the foundation which we lay for the actions that we take. Luke 6.46 says, Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Oh, Jesus, we love you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I can't wait to get home and crack open that beer and watch the football game. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus didn't say he couldn't watch a football game. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just getting the idea. In Luke 6.47 says, Whoso cometh to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. This is the story of the house on the rock and the house on the sand. But it starts with, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say? See, we have to relate those two things. This is what he's talking about. So whoso comes to me and hears my saying, I'll show you who he's like. He's like a man that built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it where it was founded upon the rock. He's the rock of my salvation. He's the stone that the builders rejected. But he that hears and does not is like a man that without a foundation built a house on the earth in the world against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. Immediately. It was nothing. There was no foundation. And the ruin of that house was great. It not only fell, it was just destroyed. Okay, but he that hears and does not, yeah, is, and so, so what I want to talk about is God's coming to America, right? We heard that this week during the Feast of Trumpets. The prophets are saying God is coming to America. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Thanks for coming to America. <laughs> 
you might not say that if you don't have your house built on a firm foundation. Because he's bringing judgment. And when that judgment comes, the house that's on the sand, what's the Sunday school thing? And the house on the sand fell flat. <laughs> that's right. We've been singing it. I, I went to Sunday school when I was five or six years old. I've been singing it ever since then. Now I'm going to see it come to pass. Have you settled it? We're coming up to the Day of Atonement, right? Where the books are open. The king has been approachable. We could go to him out in the field. We can talk to him. We can, he can, um, he's more personable, so to speak. We can go to God and say, oh, Lord, I'm ready to talk to you about that thing that I have never talked to anybody about, including you. I'm ready to bring it all. I'm ready to lay it down, and I'm ready to take up the foundation, this Bible, this Word of God. Now, here's, <laughs> this is just an interesting thing that I saw on Facebook this week from a friend on there, and she said I could use it. Uh, here's what a large part of the Christian population is. Progressive Christians, here's a definition. A double-minded person who professes faith in Christ while rejecting the truth of his word. They reject the real Jesus in favor of a more humanistic, socially acceptable, and politically correct Jesus. Their Jesus is really no more than a God of their imagination. This is what I like. Just He, he thinks like them, he acts like them, and he tolerates sin just like they do. They claim to believe in the Bible while rejecting it as authoritative. They say they are, suspense as we turn the page, in search of the truth, but they never actually find it. The only truth they are sure about is the idea that we shouldn't preach against sin. Don't judge. Don't judge. Boy, I'm so sick of that, I could throw, it out, throw up out of my mouth. I'm telling you. Don't judge. Come on, people. That's just an excuse. Don't shine that light on me. I'm getting into darkness. I'm going to go to gross darkness pretty soon. That's right. I'm more comfortable in the dark. So let's see it, because we want to settle it today. So here's what the Word says, and we have heard all our lives as Christians. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What is that word there? Word. The Word. What's the Bible? The Word. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> the same was in the beginning with God. This Bible didn't just start when they wrote it down. It was there in the beginning. All things were made by Him. Without Him, there was not anything made that was made. There's nothing made without words. God says it, and you see it in Genesis, God created by his words. We create by our words. It's very important to watch your words now. I'm telling you that the power to create in our words is increasing in us. God's, God's saying, I can trust you with more, so I'm going to allow you to create more with what you say. So you've got to be responsible with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I got this. Uh, um, uh, this is my freebie scripture of the week. Ephesians 4.29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. You say, well, do I have to be nicey-nicey all the time? No. <laughs> you have to be in love all the time. You know, and you have to be ministering grace to the hearer. Sometimes the truth is grace to the hearer. They don't know it. They never heard it. They haven't heard it preached. How will they hear without a preacher? We have to tell them. But we have to tell them in love. We have to hear from God. We have to know when to tell them, what to tell them, how much to tell them, when to stop. You know, the days of running around going door to door saying, if you died today, do you know you'd go to heaven or... Stop it. I had an old friend who used to tell me, you need to be a man's friend before you can be his counselor. 
and the truth in that is that you have to build a relationship. But relationships are built in 10 seconds, 10 minutes, 10 hours, 10 days, 10 months, 10 years. All of those are relationships. So when you first meet somebody, your relationship starts. I don't care if it's only for a minute. You are building a relationship. That'll help you if you hear what I'm saying. All things are made by him. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Darkness. Gross darkness. What, do we, what does darkness, what has to happen for darkness to go away? There we go. That's darkness and light 101. And the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehendeth it not. Darkness doesn't leave because it, so it hears the word and it, <laughs> and it changes. That's not why darkness leaves. Light replaces darkness. Okay. So in the, and then in verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who are we talking about? Nobody knows. The word was made flesh. Jesus. There we go. Say that loud. Jesus. The word was made flesh. Now, if Jesus is the word, oh, okay, I better finish this one. Dwell among us, we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, only, full of grace and truth. Now, if Jesus is the word of God, and the Bible is the word of God, we cannot say we believe in Jesus without believing that the Bible is the final authority, case closed. If you believe in Jesus, he is the Word. You can't believe in Jesus and not believe what the Word says. Yeah. Cannot. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so tired of, well, I'm just waiting for God to reveal it to me. Read it. 90% of it's already there. Yeah. And the rest of it, yeah, he'll reveal it to you. But not if you don't read the rest. Because you won't even know what he's saying when he does reveal it to you. The Word is there for you to understand who God is. It, 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 it describes Him. It explains Him. It shows how He acts. It shows what He does. It shows how different situations He moves. It's all in there. What is it, the soup? It says it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. So settle it today. Settle it right now. Then do what it says no matter what. No matter what you think, no matter what you feel, no matter what your neighbor says, do it. There are so many times that I had to just obey God. <laughs> and I didn't want to. And I couldn't see how that was going to work. And I didn't know what was going to happen. But when I obeyed God, <laughs> you know, I, there are things that I have not seen till years afterwards. I don't know why you did that, God, <laughs> you know. I don't know why I was supposed to do this and that. But years later, all of a sudden I see, oh, yeah, should have had a V8. Settle it right now. Repent for your disobedience. Not understanding the Word of God is disobedience. I mean, you know, if you're not reading, if you're not trying to understand God, that's disobedience. That's sin. You're sinning without even doing anything. Repent for your disobedience and become all you can be for the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, you have that opportunity right now. Today is the day of salvation if you harden not your hearts. If you harden not your hearts. It's you that has to make the choice. Choose you this day who you will serve. <laughs> there is so much more to that than just reading that. Josh just said, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But then he turned around and did it. That's the thing. You can say it all day long. And it's okay. You know, I mean, sure, you're in a place where you go, God, I don't even know how to do this. I, I, I don't know. That, that doesn't change anything. Do it. It's written down. Do it. The law is there. The Ten Commandments, it's, it's there 
to show you. This is, what, this is the base, basic things you should do. Jesus said to the rich and young ruler, well, where are you at? He said, well, I, I do all the commandments, which probably was a lie, but <laughs> he probably broke that one. But still, he, he knew what the first thing to do was. You know, but Jesus said, hey, there's a little bit more to it. You can know them all, but now follow me, and I'll show you how to know them all right from your heart. That you won't be doing it because it's a set of rules. You'll be doing it because out of your heart you want to serve God. Man, I want to do the Ten Commandments. I love them. I love that we have a foundation and a guide. So what am I saying? Today. Today. I'm telling you, there's somebody today. Probably all of us to a point. But there is somebody today that needs to settle that this Bible is the truth. And this ministry is giving you the truth, and you need to get into it. Now, I started off talking about the helps ministry. We need help. You know, we need more workers. We need more helpers. We, we are increasing all the time. We're getting more people all over the world. So come to BAM, if you're in the area, and help. Just say, I know the Bible says I should help. Say that with me. I know the Bible says I should help. So get in here and help. It's not hard. <laughs> my commandments are not grievous. <laughs> Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden's light. It's a lot of fun, isn't it, people? Serving God. It's, it's a blast. We have some of the best laughs in the conference room, you know, among us. Sometimes we get laughing so much we have to come back down and get back to the meeting. But, <laughs> but it's because we love each other and we enjoy each other's company. All right, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to believe with you. If you don't know how to do it, I'm going to believe with you. If you do know how to do it and you just haven't been doing it, we're going to repent. Right? Is everybody ready? This is part of rolling on with Jesus. That's what this is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that hears the recording, that sees this live and hears this live, the conference line, the people on the live chat, and the people in this building. Father, I thank you that you are our God. There are no other gods before us. I didn't even get into that part, but <laughs> there's no other gods before us. And so we come to you, Lord, and we repent. We turn around. We're turning away from our lackadaisical, let-it-go attitude. Father, we no longer want to just say, we believe in the Bible. We want to believe with our heart and our soul and our mind, every inch of our being. And so, Father, for those that are repenting along with me, I just thank you that you deliver us in a supernatural way to more, to more understanding, to greater heights in our Bible understanding. And for those who don't know what to do, they've never done it before, you probably need to get saved. So we'll just say this prayer. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I turn around from my life. I give it all up. I give it all up. I just give up. I can't do it. I need you. Come into my life. Change me. Help me to understand that this Bible is the Word of God. And I'll serve you the rest of my life. And Lord... Send me your Holy Spirit in abundance that it will fill me to overflowing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, chat in. Let us know where you're at. Let us know what's going on. You can get a hold of us. You can go to the prayer uh, email, uh, <laughs> prayer at bami.org, prayer at bami.org. You can call us. We have a prayer line, 855 bam word and you'll probably get the wonderful elder christy she's usually the first one that gets the call and she is a prayer person and if you have questions there's a list of people you can go to and she can get you to who you need to get to so there's lots of ways go to our website listen to the word being taught to you we're not doing that for our health we're not just throwing stuff up on the internet so people can look at our selfie. 
we are putting things there, tools for you to learn. All right? Hallelujah. So, let the word become life in your life and roll on with Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God.